Hi everyone, this is Dr. O, and in the next two videos we're going to talk about the nasal cavity. Here we're going to start with the walls of the nasal cavity and the sinuses around them. Specifically, what are the concha and the meatuses of the lateral nasal wall and what spaces communicate with each meatus? But before we get into that, I do want to talk a little bit about the septum. So the septum is found medially, separating the nasal cavity into two nasal cavities. And you'll see that the superior portion of the septum is formed by the ethmoid bone, specifically the perpendicular plate, and the inferior portion by the vomer. If we look at this from another view, we can see that perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and how it actually extends superiorly as the crista galli. You'll remember the crista galli as the attachment point for the folk cerebri, and also on either side of it, you'll find the ethmoid foramina of the cribriform plate. Now, inferior and posterior is a view of that vomer, and it is named for its plow shape, so you can kind of see how it looks more like a plow, especially anteriorly here. Now the septum is completed here by septal cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage. And keep in mind that much of the anterior nose is made up of hyaline cartilage, so it's much more mobile. And then as you get more posteriorly, it is a lot more bony and less mobile. So then the lateral walls are made up of these concha. So concha, you can think of a shell or maybe a scroll shape. And you can see here kind of this shape hanging medially off the lateral wall. Now the two superior concha, really you can only see well the middle here, superior is a little bit behind, are from the ethmoid bone. So they're a portion of the ethmoid bone. The inferior nasal concha is a bone of its own. So it's a paired bone uh, found only in the nasal cavity here and here. In these are really important in terms of increasing the surface area, allowing for warming, moistening, and humidifying of the air that's coming in through the nasal cavity before it passes into the nasopharynx, the pharynx, and into the lungs. Now again, from a different view, we can see again here, the superior on the right side, middle, both of the ethmoid bone, and then inferior nasal concha, a bone of its own. Now, just posterior to these, we find that opening to the pharyngotympanic tube. Here we see we're within the nasopharynx, which would then lead down here, um, in close association with the nasal cavity. The surface area of the mucosa on these nasal concha also will lead to some changes in the nasal passages with inflammation. So you can imagine if all of this mucosa is inflamed, this can lead to these concha pressing up against the septum and really closing off the passage of the nasal cavity. So this is sort of that blocked up feeling that you might feel when you have a cold or some form of upper respiratory infection. So let's take a look at these in 3D space. So in green is the ethmoid bone. You can see that here, forming the medial wall of the orbits. Then the lower portion of the septum is formed by the vomer. In the inferior nasal concha, you can see here on the lateral walls. From superior, you can see how that uh, ethmoid bone continues up into the anterior cranial fossa as the crista galli and the cribriform plate. And then from this view, this is called the coana, the two openings from posteriorly into the nasal cavity. And you can see that part of that is made up of the vomer and partially by the ethmoid bone, and then the lateral portions of it by the maxilla, and inferiorly by the palatine bones. Now, if we remove the context, we can see again in green is that ethmoid bone with the crista galli upward, and then there is the vomer, a more anterior portion of it. Here, cribriform plate, and these brown um, bits are the inferior nasal concha. Now these aren't perfect shapes, 
Um, but again, hopefully the 3D configuration helps. So rounding the nasal cavity, we find paranasal sinuses. And these are spaces within the neighboring bones that are extensions of the nasal cavity. So the mucosa is continuous over the nasal cavity, its concha, the septum, and then lining these spaces. Now there are four sinuses and then one opening into the nasal cavity. So the first we see here is the frontal sinus. And this is one that I think all of us can relate to in having a sinus infection and feeling that pressure right above your eyes, kind of right behind your eyebrows. The other that is more easily palpated would be that maxillary sinus. And that is, again, just below your eyes where you imagine having sinus pressure um, in your cheek area on either side of your nose. There are two other sinuses. We're going to visualize them here in the anterior view, but they are best seen from a lateral view, which we'll see in a second. More midline, we find the sphenoid sinus, but imagine this being much more posterior. And then more lateral, kind of in the medial side of the orbit here, and the lateral side of the nasal cavity are the ethmoid air cells. Now from a lateral view, this is a view we saw the concha within. And these are showing us where they would be lateral to the nasal cavity. But first, here is the frontal sinus. You can see openings for it in this donor here. Running along here would be deep to that, we'd find the maxillary sinus. And now we have the best view here of about where we'd find those ethmoid sinuses or the ethmoid air cells. And then also right here where we see the sphenoid sinus. Now the sphenoid sinus is really interesting in its relationships, that it is very closely associated with the nasal cavity, but it also forms the floor of where the pituitary gland sits, and it's just on the other side of a thin bone from the anterior cranial fossa, and from the middle cranial fossa here. The other opening we see here is called the nasolacrimal duct. And this is something you'll be familiar from the lacrimal system. We have lacrimal gland fluid passing down and around and eventually will drain down into the nasolacrimal duct, which then drains into the nasal cavity. So let's take a look at these in the context of a skull. Again, you see those ethmoid air cells right on the medial wall of the orbit. And then if we make those bones translucent, we can see in yellow frontal sinuses, posterior to that ethmoid and posterior to that sphenoid. Then here are those maxillary sinuses, quite large, and the small nasal lacrimal duct found medial to either of the maxillary sinuses. So now we wanna talk about where they drain into the nasal cavity. And these are into spaces called the nasal meatuses. So these are found lateral to the concha, in general in the space around these concha. So the, the different spaces are the sphenoethmoidal recess found most superiorly, the superior nasal meatus, which is found lateral to the superior nasal concha here, the middle nasal meatus found lateral to the middle nasal concha, and then the inferior nasal meatus found lateral to the inferior nasal concha. Now in the image on the right side, the concha have been removed, so you have a better view of seeing here the sphenoethmoidal recess, the smaller superior nasal meatus, the quite large middle nasal meatus, and then the inferior nasal meatus down below. So let's talk about which sinuses drain into which parts, which nasal meatuses. We're going to start here with the sphenoid sinus. It's outlined here in orange, and we can see that it'll pass here into what is called the sphenoethmoidal recess, which only receives from the sphenoid sinus. The superior nasal meatus will receive from these posterior ethmoidal air cells. The middle nasal meatus has a lot of drainage within it, from the frontal sinus, 
both the anterior and the middle ethmoidal air cells, as well as the maxillary sinus. Finally, the inferior nasal meatus is just where the nasal lacrimal duct will drain. Now there are named openings leading from each of the sinuses into their respective drainage points in the meatus or recess. Here we see the opening for the sphenoid sinus heading toward that sphenoethmoidal recess. We also see what is called the ethmoid bulla. What this is, is the projection of the middle ethmoidal air cells toward the nasal cavity and kind of that bump is known as the ethmoid bulla. And the middle ethmoidal air cells will drain into that area. Now below it, we see what is called the semilunar hiatus. That receives openings from the anterior ethmoidal air cells and the maxillary sinus that would be found around here. The most anterior and superior aspect of the semilunar hiatus right here is called the in ethmoid infundibulum. And this receives the frontonasal duct from that frontal sinus. Now in terms of the maxillary sinus, you'll remember that it's actually quite inferior. It's ghosted around in this area. So it's opening or ostium has to actually ascend up from the maxillary sinus into the nasal cavity, specifically that semilunar hiatus and the middle nasal meatus. So keep in mind the last time that you had a sinus infection and you laid down to sleep at night and you felt like one side of your nose was very blocked up and so you turn to the other side and all of a sudden that changed, right? And so you can imagine with gravity, when we're upright, there's a little bit of resistance unless that maxillary sinus is full for it to drain into the nasal cavity. But as soon as we lay down, that gives a little bit of a better kind of route for the drainage to come through. So when we're laying on our sides, our upper maxillary sinus is draining into the nasal cavity and when we switch sides, the other side is draining in. Below, within the inferior nasal meatus, we see that opening there from the nasal lacrimal duct. All right, so let us assess ourselves and see where we are with this. And I want you to answer the question, which paranasal sinus forms the floor of the orbit? Is it A, the frontal sinus, B, the ethmoidal air cells, C, maxillary sinus, or D, sphenoid sinus? So go ahead and pause so you can choose your answer. And when you're ready, what did you choose? So here we see our orbit, and we see many sinuses related to the orbit. So superior to it, we find the frontal sinus. Medial to it, we find the ethmoid sinuses. And then inferiorly, we find the maxillary sinus. So the maxillary sinus forms the floor of the orbit. So the correct answer here is C. But which one forms the medial wall of the orbit? and that would be the ethmoidal air cells. So you can imagine how an infection could spread from these ethmoidal air cells into the orbit, especially how close they are in relation to the optic nerve, which would be coursing around here. The other close relationship that the maxillary sinus has is with the superior alveolar area. So the maxilla itself, just below this space, we'd find we're in the oral cavity. So during a third molar extraction, if there was a root that broke off and lodged into the maxillary sinus, an infection could spread down into the oral cavity or at least into the teeth. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for your attention. Please feel free to reach out with any questions you have.